Hi, you ever go out and take travel photos of buildings and then when you get back home, they look a little warped, kind of like this one? Well, today we're going to show an easy way that you can get from this photo to something that looks more like this. Hi, my name is William Beam. I am a travel and portrait photographer based in Central Florida. And today we want to talk about architectural perspective correction. So basically look at this photo that we've got over here. You can see that it's leaning kind of back a little bit and you can see the lines here on the arches aren't quite straight. They're leaning inwards and the building itself is leaning backwards. It's a kind of a common problem. If you'll notice that when I took this photo, I took this at 24 millimeters, which is a rather wide angle lens and I'm standing across the street. I didn't really have any other options to try and get a shot of this. This was just a snapshot on my first day in Cuba. And I didn't think much of it. Then after I started looking at the photo, I thought, you know, there's a little bit more there than what this raw photo looks like. And I wanted to fix it up. So today we're going to talk about how we're going to correct the leaning back, the leaning inward. And it's really very, very simple in Lightroom. So we're going to start this off. I always go over to lens correction first and check the uh, profile. You can see right off the bat, you just this little check, I'm going to undo it. And you can see how it kind of changes how the building shape is just a little bit, but we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and remove chromatic aberration. I don't really see much on this image anyways, but what we're going to do is next is go down to the transform and in the upright area, the first thing I always start with is auto. And it's amazing how many times this does the whole job for me. And look at that. You can, obviously we've got some uh, correction coming down here at the bottom, but it's brought the building forward and it's corrected the lines over here. They're kind of straight up and down. If that doesn't do it for you, you've got a number of lines here to transform. So if we hit the vertical one, you can see how that kind of moves things back and forth from the top row, kind of bringing it in and back out and same with the bottom. Horizontal is going to do the same thing from side to side. So if you've got something that was maybe taken a bit on an angle, you've got a couple of sliders here that can actually correct it rather easily and rotate in case you just don't feel that it's level as it needs to be. And the same thing with angles, you can kind of stretch things back and forth. Well, I'm going to undo all this because quite honestly, I am happy with what I got just from auto, but that's the, the quick and easy way to do it is hit auto and then make some adjustments to it. You've got sliders that will take you around and just correct any little details that you want to. All right. The first thing you might notice though, are these little triangles here where you're not going to get the whole photo that you shot. And that is kind of why I was shooting with a wide angle. I wanted to get the feeling of the building and I wanted to shoot wider than what my crop factor would allow, because I know that I was gonna have to do some correction when I came back. So the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here and hit the crop button. And I'm gonna start kind of at the bottom and bring this in to there. And I just basically wanna be as far down as I can get and still, I need to bring this down a little bit. I need to be within those frames. And so I think I've got just what I need. I've got a nice straight line on the top. I've got a straight line on the bottom. I think that crop works for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the enter button. And first off, I've got my photo. It's straight. It looks what I, like sort of like what I saw as far as the leaning back and forth. It's not there anymore. And once you've cropped it out, you really don't know what you're missing. So it's not like anybody else is gonna worry about it. You may want to pull this over to the side if you're concerned about having like two arches over here and two arches over there. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But the next thing is we can just go ahead and start finishing the photo. Let me go over here to the basic panel and I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just kind of hitting each of these to see what Lightroom does on its own. You can go ahead and hit the auto adjustment, but I, honestly, I never really care for the auto adjustment. So let me go back and reset that. And I'll bring my exposure back down a little bit. All right, we've got, it kind of, it, it doesn't really grab me that way. So I'm gonna do a couple things here. I am going to bring up the vibrance just a little bit and I'm gonna bring up the clarity just a little bit. Uh, my vibrance slider doesn't wanna stick with me. And I think what I'm gonna to need to do in this are a few things. One, I've, I'm very bright up here. So I'm going to take a gradient and let's pull that down and just kind of darken this up a little bit. And I also noticed that the light in these arches isn't quite giving me what I want. So let me close that. And I'm going over here and get a radial filter. And I, what I want to do is I just kind of want to fill that arch and bring the exposure up a little bit and see how the light is kind of coming in there. But I'm also going to push a little bit of contrast 
and a little bit more clarity. I'm going to bring up the highlights. And I think that will do what I need to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is since I've got to put this in a few more places, I'm simply going to duplicate this and drag the duplicate over here. I'm going to duplicate this again. And as you guessed, we'll just continue the process for each arch. Ah, that one didn't want to duplicate for me. Every once in a while, working with the Wacom pen. There we go. You can see it's doubled up there. And this one, we're just going to go ahead and delete. How many do I have? Yeah, I can tell I don't need this one either. Okay, so I've got that done. Next, I decided I'm going to go with another gradient. I'm actually going to bring this one down here to kind of darken the bottom. Don't want to do too much, but basically that road is a little bit brighter than I want it to be. Pull that in. And that might be a bit too much, but there we go. And I might give that a little bit of clarity as well. And let's go back and take a look. So we started off here, and that's that's got the crop in it, but it doesn't have any of the adjustments that we made as far as the color, the clarity, and, of course, the uh, transformation. But well, we've taken this photo, and we've gone from here to here with just a couple of sliders. And that is a quick and easy way that you can take some of your travel photos where you kind of shoot on the run. You don't have time to set up with an architectural lens and uh, tilt shift perspective. You can roll all that stuff. You can go out and take your shots, bring it back into Lightroom, and just like that, you're done. Thank you very much. And again, my name is William Beam. You can find me at williambeam.com. And I am an affiliate for Adobe. So if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop and you'd like to get it, there is a program for photographers that you can get it for about $10 a month, which is a great deal because we paid a lot more for that in the past. And as you can get that through my affiliate link at williambeam.com slash CC, and that'll take you over to the creative cloud. Also, if you're interested, we have a podcast called The Photo Flunky Show, where my wife and I talk about photography issues, and we'd love to have you listen in. Thank you so much.